Hello and welcome. My name is Shlomi Zeltzinger. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk with you about Solidity. Solidity is a language which was specifically created in order to write smart contracts for Ethereum. Now, because Solidity was specifically created in order to write smart contracts in Ethereum, understanding it will give you a great advantage, not only in building your own applications, decentralized application and smart contract, but also in understanding both the limitation and the powers of the Ethereum protocol. It will also greatly help you to understand how other smart contracts work. So if you want to interact with another smart, smart contract, you will know what to expect. Now, before we start to work with Solidity, there is something you need to understand about contracts. Contracts is the highest type of object that can exist in Ethereum. Everything that we will do, every transaction, every variable we are going to store, every type of computational work we are going to perform, will be done within a constraint of a predefined contract. So let's now start and build our own first contract. It is actually quite simple. We only need to declare contract and give it a name. I'm going to call my contract example. I'm going to put a curly bracket and the rest of my contract will be written here in the constraint of the example contract. And now I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it example and the ending should be SOL for solidity. And now, believe it or not, this is your first contract. This contract, which is called example, you can compile it, you can transmit it to the Ethereum blockchain, and it will be stored on the Ethereum blockchain. You will get an address, and you will get a confirmation, and this contract will be published for anyone to see on the Ethereum blockchain, as it is. But of course you don't want to deploy such a contract. It doesn't do much. It's not that impressive. So I'm going to add a variable to my contract. This variable is going to be string. It's going to be public. And it's going to be called, let's call this brand name. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end because every statement in Solidity needs to end with a semicolon. And let's have a look for a second at what I just did. I declared a variable, which is a string. I made sure this variable will be public, which means that everyone who knows how to look for this example contract, this is basically anyone who will have the address for this contract, will be allowed to see, read, and to some extent even to interact with this variable, brand name. This variable, brand name, pay attention, I've put a capital letter, a capital N, when I wanted a space to be placed. The compiler and the browser already know to read this as a brand space name. Whenever you want to put a space between two words in your variable name or in your function name, just start the other word with a capital letter. Now again, I can publish it as is and it will be accepted into the Ethereum blockchain, but it will still won't give me much. I want this to contain some information. So let's say that I'm going to assign some string to this variable. I'm going to call this brand mm, Diginomics. Let's save it. And right now I can take this contract and I can deploy it onto the blockchain. Anyone will have the address of this example contract, can see that I have assigned a variable, which is a public variable, a string type variable called brand name with this string, Diginomics. Might be quite useful, even though it doesn't seem that useful at the moment, but maybe I'm going to open my own company and I want to have some sort of a proof that I did work on this brand. So in five years time, 10 years time, if the Ethereum protocol, if the Ethereum blockchain is still available, I will, st I will be able to use this address of this contract, of this example contract 
in order to prove that I did publish this brand name, Digenomics. And already in this one line, we've actually created some sort of a contract which has some sort of functionality. It does worth something. It actually does something. So I want to take now this contract and I want to actually transmit it to the blockchain. So in order to transmit this contract to the blockchain, the easiest way to do so will be to use the Mist Wallet. So the Mist Wallet, it looks like this. For the purpose of this tutorial, I am using the testnet. You can see it because there is this red box at the top. I strongly suggest that if you just try this for the first time, you should also use the testnet because the testnet won't use any real ether, which is very important. You don't want to lose any real money on mistakes. If you are not in the testnet, you can go here to develop, network, and you can choose between the main network and the testnet. So once you did make sure you are on the testnet, go to this tab, contracts, deploy a new contract over here, and in the middle, you can see this, Solidity Contract Source Code. I will take the source code of the contract example and I will just paste it in this box over here. Right now you can see that on the right I have this option Select Contract to Deploy. Pick a contract and I get a list of all the possible contracts. In this code there is only one contract example. So I'm going to pick example. I will go down and I will deploy this contract. I'm going to wait for a minute for this contract to be created. We can watch it over here at the bottom. Okay, now the contract has been created. We can go back to our contracts tab over here. And we can look down here for contract called example. This is our contract. It's called example. It has an address. This is the address of the contract. I can give this address to anyone and they will be able to watch this contract as long as they know how to do so. I will explain how to watch contracts in a later video. And you can see that down here I have a variable called brand name and the brand which I assigned, Digenomics. Right now I can prove to the whole world that on May 25 I've published this variable brand name onto the blockchain um, and that can be, I don't know, that can be my way of proving that I thought of this brand before anyone else. So that was my first contract. It is quite important if I just want to publish, or it is quite useful if I only want to publish one string and nothing else, and I want to keep this contract as is. But maybe I can make some sort of improvement to this contract. Let's think about it this way. I am an owner of a company which allows other people to deploy their own contracts with their own brand name. So I want that the brand name won't be hard-coded in my contract, I want it to be some sort of a parameter that the user insert whenever he deploy a new contract. In order to do it, I'm going to use something called constructor, and constructor going to be the first function we are going to learn. So we're going to declare a function, function, and the name of the function, of the constructor function, not any function, but the constructor function itself needs to be the same as the name of the contract. So the name of the contract is example. Therefore, the name of the constructor should also be example with a capital E. Example. The idea of a constructor is to make a function which will be executed immediately as this contract is being published to the blockchain. And actually, this contract won't even be published to the blockchain before this function 
is executed and completed. So what I want this function to do, I want it to ask the user what type of a brand name does he choose. And in order to do so, I'm going to put brackets and I'm going to declare the type of a variable which I want the user to give me. I want the user to give me a string and I'm going to call this string also brand name. Just pay attention that this time I've placed an underscore before the name of the variable. This is just to help me to distinguish between this brand name which I've already declared and the brand name that I want the user to insert. I can also completely change it and call it something completely different. For example, um, let's call it your company name. This is it. We are going to open curly bracket and we are going to say that this time brand name will be equal to your company name. Don't forget semicolon at the end. So let's remove this from the top. I don't need this part anymore. I will insert my company name manually when I publish this contract and I want to show you how this contract works in action. So I'm going to copy it, go back to my missed wallet, contracts, deploy new contract, solidity contract source code, and I will paste the source code for my contract. Now you can see it asked me to select a contract. So I'm going to select the contract example. But this time, you see, it won't allow me to deploy unless I insert this. Constructor parameters. And you can see that it asked me to insert a string called your company name. So my company name will be DGnomics. So now I can go down here and deploy the contract. I will insert my password. And let's see down here when the contract is being created. We need to wait for a few seconds. There we go. We got a new example uh, contract. Let's go over here and we can find it right here. And once again, the brand name is Diginomics, but this time I've inserted manually this variable before I deploy the contract. It wasn't hard-coded into my contract.